Hey guys, Dabu 7, March 8th, 2014, and what you're looking at is a massive cigar-shaped UFO that has been filmed in broad daylight in the Ukraine. Now, this is being reported on mainstream television. Um, I'll leave a link to MSNBC on their official page. You can see this is 100% real. This isn't Photoshop. This isn't fake. And for those of you new to this, this is indeed what they look like. Um, the common cigar-shaped UFO. This looks to be very massive in size compared to the buildings and the structures below, knowing that this is further off in the sky. Um, very interesting footage. Wanted to share it with you guys. We'll take an up close look real, real quick, and I will leave a link so you guys can uh, see that it's being posted on the mainstream. So we have a huge cigar-shaped UFO over the Ukraine. So we have UFOs, pyramids, and war taking place here in the Ukraine. Guys, I got a feeling we're definitely are not being told something. Amazing footage. I'll leave a link as always. Until next time, this has been Dabu7. Eyes to the skies. Tonight, the King 5 investigators exposed how the state of Washington let the federal government and one of its Hanford contractors off the hook after inspectors found one broken law after another at the nuclear site. As King 5 Susanna Frame reports, in her ongoing investigation, Hanford's dirty secrets, state inspectors pushed hard for serious penalties for the violations, but their managers ignored their advice, leaving some to ask, does the state have any teeth at Hanford? Right beside the Columbia River near Richland is the most contaminated site in the entire Western Hemisphere, the Hanford Nuclear Reservation. Years of production for the country's nuclear weapons program left such a long-term threat to environmental and human health here that Congress made two government agencies, the EPA and the Washington State Department of Ecology, the cops at the site. It's their job to make sure the U.S. Department of Energy, which owns Hanford, is cleaning up the waste safely and legally. How serious does the state take that role as regulator and compliance officer out there? Well, very seriously. Maya Bellin is the director of the State Department of Ecology. She says the message to the federal government is clear. At Hanford, they must do better to protect the public and the environment. They need to step up the game and make sure that they're appropriately managing waste at this site. That sounds good, but we've obtained thousands of documents that show something different. Two years ago, when State Department of Ecology inspectors caught the federal government and one of its contractors breaking hazardous waste laws over and over, the state agency headquartered here in Lacey had the power to bring down the hammer on the federal government. But that didn't happen. The state investigation began here at this concrete box in 2012. The Fed's contractor, CH2M Hill, found radioactive liquid coming from the box that they assumed was holding only solid materials like gloves and masks. The liquid captured in plastic water jugs turned out to contain some of the worst of the worst at the site. Lab results showed PCBs and a lot more. Beryllium, lead, mercury, plutonium, and americium cancer-causing toxins that leaked right into the ground. We find that or what goes through your mind? But we got a problem. Wade Wagner is a retired Hanford radiation specialist. First thing I would do once I verified that kind of a level is get away from it. But that leak was just the beginning. The investigation expanded well beyond the box, uncovering a system-wide host of other violations that the Department of Energy had been in trouble for before. The state inspectors found CH2M Hill didn't report the spill right away. They didn't do anything to stop it for three days. They didn't have equipment on hand to deal with the emergency. And worse, investigators found that aging container, which is one of more than 500 like it, holding toxic waste, sitting outside on gravel, illegally, rusting and falling apart. 
Three years before, the EPA discovered the exact same thing, that the Department of Energy was breaking state regulations, which do not allow storing waste in this area, unprotected boxes susceptible to spills and leaks. Three years later, and the feds hadn't made any changes, and at least one state lawmaker isn't happy about it. It's as if they're laughing at us. It's as if they have an attitude that they are the federal government, we are a mere state, and they're going to go on doing what they're doing. The state inspectors pushed hard for a tough penalty allowed under law, telling their bosses the violations are systemic and demonstrate a pattern, and that the Department of Energy can't prove it's capable, serious, or even interested in meeting minimum requirements. They strongly recommended a $1.26 million fine for behavior they thought worthy of one of the largest penalties ever assessed at Hanford. After all that, what did their boss of the Department of Ecology, John Price, and his boss, Jane Hedges, do? They ignored their own experts' advice and the state's own penalty policies. Just last month, they issued this agreement, a watered-down version of what the state investigators drafted, along with a fine that wasn't a million plus, but $15,000. 15000 is budget dust for these people. It's meaningless. It's pocket change. Senator Adam Klein got interested in this case and met with the governor and ecology leaders about it last year. He says agency managers assured him the state was taking this one seriously. i got to tell you, I'm disappointed. When Klein saw the order and fine, he says he was astounded, saying the state let the feds off the hook once again. But at some point, if you don't whack them, they're going to have an attitude that continues exactly like what they got. They don't feel they need to respond to us because we've not whacked them. And this isn't it either. No, I think we are taking it very seriously. Director Bellin says the agreement seals the deal that the feds can't sue and drag the state into court and that a smaller fine is the best way to get action. Issuing a penalty simply to be punitive is not really a way to get behavioral change in terms of handling complicated hazardous chemical waste. We're trying to get behavior change and it's very clear with the Department of Energy that we want them to be successful in getting this work done and meet their obligations under state and federal law. Now it is possible that the feds will have to pay more than the $15,000 if the Department of Energy doesn't shape up and fix a set of problems. They could pay more than $200,000 more down the line. Even so, we've spoken to several insiders in both the state and federal governments who say they're extremely disappointed. They were using the words like astounded and disgusted. Uh, they couldn't believe that the state gave this kind of, of uh, penalty. They think that, that the state uh, caved under federal pressure, which sends the wrong message to those running Hanford and they say to the public in general. It sure does appear like the state just issued a slap on the wrist, so how common is this? Unfortunately, the people who have really been involved with Hanford issues for a long time have complained about this a lot. And just last year, the EPA really hammered the state and said, you know, you're really not doing a great job out there. You don't have enough inspectors. Uh, you're not doing enough inspections. And when you do inspect, you give them advance warning so they can make everything look good. So it sounds like there is some work to be done in that area. Tonight, the K-5 investigators uncover glaring new evidence that the federal government refused to take action when faced with proof that they had a dangerous incident on their hands at the Hanford nuclear facility. As K-5 Susanna Frank reports in her ongoing investigation, Hanford's dirty secrets, when a box holding contaminated material leaked into the soil, the feds would not cooperate with state investigators and deny there was a problem. Buildings came crashing down at Hanford when making plutonium for bombs and warheads came to a halt. Workers then buried a lot of the toxic mess left behind in trenches. Containers filled with contaminated materials like piping, gloves, and masks. Now, after 30 years in the dirt, more than 500 of those containers are sitting above ground on gravel, resting, deteriorating, and in the case of this 88,000-pound box, contaminating the area around it. How serious of an event was this? Anytime you have a contamination outside of any environment, it's huge. Two years ago, workers from the government contractor on the job, CH2M Hill, were inspecting the concrete box and found something unusual. A contaminated puddle right by it. Radioactive liquid seeping into the ground from a box that was supposed to be holding solid materials. The U.S. Department of Energy, which runs Hanford, called the state to say, no big deal. 
Some contamination had been found on the ground, but likely snow or ice melt had dripped from the outside of the box. It wasn't a real leak. Here's what they didn't say that day, but came out in a meeting two weeks later. CH2 and Hill had recorded very hot alpha readings from the ground. One of the only things at Hanford that emits alpha is plutonium, the deadly radioactive metal used to fuel nuclear bombs. Would you ever expect to see numbers like that just sitting on the top no. of the surface? No. Wade Wagner is a retired radiation specialist from Hanford. For 22 years, it was his job to record contamination levels at the site. You find that, what goes through your mind? The, we got a problem. A serious one? A serious one, yeah. The State Department of Ecology, one of the sheriffs at Hanford, investigated and within three weeks confirmed the box was leaking. There'd been a dangerous waste spill into the environment. But that's not what the feds were telling the public. I live at the crack. A Department of Energy spokesperson went on TV with a Tri-Cities reporter to say that was all wrong. Somebody misinterpreted the fact that there were drips as it being drips of something other than the rainwater. Someone's saying it's a leaker when it's not. Somebody was misinformed. And those high radiation readings? The spokesperson didn't have answers about that, which unfolded in an awkward exchange during the news report. One of the questions is why is there a rad reading if it's snow melt? Because it's near radiation? I don't know that answer. Later, lab results came in with conclusive evidence. Dangerous toxics like lead, mercury, americium, and plutonium had spilled onto the gravel. Did this release potentially put workers in harm's way? Well, I think it certainly could. Stephen Gilbert is a toxicologist who's worked on Hanford issues for years. He says a trace of this kind of nuclear waste in the open air can be deadly. What could happen if someone were to ingest even a tiny fraction of plutonium? If a tiny fraction of plutonium gets in your lungs, you're likely to get lung cancer. King 5 has obtained more than 2,000 documents on this case, which show, for months, the Department of Energy stuck to its theory that the box never leaked and there was no release into the open air. We also find that state investigators were blocked for weeks from getting records about the incident or access to the site to take samples for themselves. Instead of action, the documents show the federal government's stance was to stall, defend, and deny. That prompted state investigators to write up their frustrations in internal emails. This is the most fascinating leak of rainwater my career has ever seen, wrote one investigator. I'm not surprised, wrote another. The U.S. DOE is consistently in denial. Her colleague chimed in. Snowmelt or rainwater has been their story for four weeks, and they've done very little to nothing to address the problem. You just cannot handle things by just the wait and see. In, in, in the radiation world and nuclear world, that is extremely irresponsible. Mike Jeffrey is a retired Hanford employee, a respected cleanup expert with 26 years of experience working on the front lines. He says contractors have no incentive to find and fix problems, that profits trump safety and transparency at Hanford. They continue to disrespect the, the uh, people of uh, Washington State. They're in no hurry to clean up Hanford. The longer Hanford takes to clean up, the more money they're going to make. Susanna Frame, King 5 News. The U.S. Department of Energy declined a request for an on-camera interview, but sent a statement saying they're improving systems for dealing with above-ground containers. The box in question is still sitting on the gravel, but it's now covered and is routinely monitored. back tonight at the Hanford Nuclear Reservation. Federal officials running the site have announced a new leak of radioactive waste from the tank that's been at the center of the K-5 investigation, the investigation called Hanford's Dirty Secrets. As Susanna Frame reports, this is further evidence the worst nuclear waste in the entire country is potentially leaking into the soil there. We're looking at a photo of the new leak of nuclear waste coming out of the massive million-gallon underground tank known as AY-102. This is the third identified spot where the tank is failing. Two other leak locations were documented in these photos last year. Why is this leak from this tank such a big deal? It's the first double-shell tank to start falling apart at the site. And the double shells were supposed to be the best tanks of all, designed to safely hold waste for decades until the technology to permanently dispose of the waste is developed. And this tank is holding the worst of the worst at Hanford. Radionuclides and contaminated metals no one wants migrating to the Columbia River. There is absolute threats, deadly threats from this stuff. Deadly threats. Is it going to happen today? No. When is it going to happen? 
don't know. The tank has been at the center of a King 5 investigation launch last year. We exposed the government contractor in charge of it, WRPS, ignored evidence of the leak for nearly a year before doing anything about it. Instead of being proactive, they become defensive. So now it's been nearly two and a half years since this former WRPS worker, Mike Jeffrey, found the first signs of the leak in 2011. And to date, there's no solid plan of what to do about it. Jeffrey says the company is stalling, hoping the leak won't get much worse. You need to handle everything as this, as if it's real. You may respond to a few false alarms, but that's, that's the way it is. You just cannot handle things by just the wait and see. Uh, in, in the radiation world and the nuclear world, that is extremely irresponsible. So the big question is, is this slide leaking outside of the tank and into the soil? The U.S. Department of Energy, which owns Hanford, uh, owns it, says the nuclear sludge is confined to a safety space around AY-102. It's a double shell. Um, so there is this, this about foot foot of a safety space all the way around it. But there is a leak detection system around the tank as well, and that has indicated that the waste is getting into the environment. So they really haven't done all the tests they need to do to say whether or not it's in the ground and heading toward the Columbia. Mm -hmm. Susanna. Heads up, this is from Daniel Ovdoria 2 D-A-N-I-E-L-O-F-D-O-R-I-A-02, or zero 02. And it says, OMG, chemtrail non-melt, non-melting snow tested with metal detector. Now this is a good idea. All you people out there that have metal detectors, why don't you post what you found on my channel? Alrighty then, let's watch this. I just love the smell of fresh barium and aluminum in the morning, don't you? Mmm, that's the fresh grind. They didn't give us the old stale this time, no siree. We just love this mountain air here. We just can... <coughs> Alrighty then. Pristine snow. Did one of the deers drop their beer cans here again? Maybe somebody was using a stapler right here. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I love aluminum and barium. Isn't this great, folks? So, uh... Let's have a barium fight! All right, everybody! <laughs> mm. Oh! Okay, let's see what we got. Are you f***ing kidding me? Oh. You've got to be kidding me. Okay. Wow. Okay, let's make sure now. You, you you have any laces? Put it down there. Do you have any metal uh, loops on your... No. Okay, go over the snow again here. Oh my god. Let's try some water. This is... You're fucking kidding me, right? Jesus Christ. Great. That's that's great. Okay. Now the water's not rushing real fast here, but no. now we this is the same creek that we were just in two months ago, okay? 
same settings. You have to turn it up all the way. Where you, when you hit places that you don't have a bunch of trash, you turn it up all the way. And this is where we got it right now, up all the way. We were right through this exact creek bed, and we didn't see shit for trash. We pulled a couple bullets out. Those are a drag, you know. But please, this is just. It's straight barium and aluminum. Okay, let's let's go to a place where the water was rushing. Let's do that. And away we go. Nice fresh spot here. Okay, so yeah, how how's the troll gonna explain this one here? Uh, yeah, that. Well, everyone knows that snow has, has, uh, what is it, uh, iron in it. It's fortified. Didn't you know that, dude? Here, I thought it was just water crystals frozen. Oh, here. dude. Where you been, man? Snow's like, it's made up of natural iron. It's supposed to do that, bro. <laughs> you don't know nothing, man. Are you fucking kidding me? Is there any place that does not have metal in the snow here? I haven't found one yet, sir. Okay, let's let's keep going. Let's go to the, the water, like I said. Let's get where it's rushing. That's crazy! All snow has iron in it. What are you talking about? Okay, I'm going to pull away from there. Up yeah, see all the metal, nice and strong. Metal detector is working properly. Okay. Yeah. Hang on a second, dude. Jesus, I can't even fucking breathe. Okay. All right. You gotta be, you're fucking kidding me. Oh my god. Get it in a spot where, you know, like, it collects around big rocks. Like gold, I'm sure. Fucking. Great. Well, everybody enjoy the friggin' snow. It's wonderful Arizona snow. You can make, uh, Automobiles out of it, uh, snowmobiles, snow, snowmen too. Yeah, you Probably could probably move. just melt the shit down and make cars out of it too. Great. Well, thanks for watching. The head can go underwater, no problem. It's it's designed for it. Yeah, that sounds like that. God damn it! Fucking kidding me, right? Well, people, try it at home. Sure, this don't prove nothing. No, no. God, no, it wouldn't prove anything. Fuck you. Doesn't. Jesus. That's probably what they're going to say, too. <laughs> Dog ass. When are people going to fucking wake up? I'm done. Well, won't that, like, help out Detroit? We could make, like, open a manufacturer of automobiles. We won't even need to, like, buy any, any, uh, steel. You know? Damn, that's pretty cool. The government's working, helping us with industry, too. So. So, you know, it's not all bad, folks. I mean, think about it. You've got your pros, and you've got your cons. Okay? Hell. We were able to walk really nicely through the snow when it's covered completely with barium. I mean, it's kind of like snow salt. Good for the roads. Yeah, on the cons, we're going to be taking blood thinners for the next year, at least until we're dead, you know, <laughs> trying to be positive on the year thing. And then you got the other positives. I mean, think about it. I was on the phone a little while ago. Man, you used to never get good reception up here. Why, with straight barium and aluminum in the air, we're getting great reception.
I noticed the TV reception is better too.